Hello, and welcome to the SAS Companion for lecture number 12. Lecture 12 is the nested effects. Um, in the lecture, we discovered what they mean, how to do them, why we should do them. And here we're going to see how to do them in SAS. Um, I'm going to follow one of the book examples, example 10.4, which starts on page 544. The data comes from table 10.10. .10. Um, but first, I guess, we need to start SAS. seem to recall we need to make these things bigger. That was not where I wanted to click. 16, was that good enough? Okay. You won't be able to see the log, but you can see the editor, and that's what counts. All right, so the data is from table 10.10. .10. Um, by the way, comments in SAS, one way of doing it is a slash star, and that'll comment all the way to a star slash, and that just allows you to comment and make your code more readable. So let's go ahead and create a data set, and we'll call the data set, mm, let's see, DT104. And believe it or not, I already typed it in. DT104 for 10.4. Um, first value is production value, then the shift number, then the worker number. And note that the worker is nested in the shift. For instance, worker 1 doesn't exist anywhere else except in shift 1. Um, shift and worker are both are, uh, string, and production value is going to be our numeric variable. And while we're at it, just look at it. Let's do a proc univariate. I seem to have proc variate dt104. Let's run it and make sure we've got no errors. Uh, that's right, we need a run statement and we need a quit statement. Don't forget those, otherwise you just hit the run and nothing happens. So here we go. Prod val, there's 60 values. Uh, they add up to 317. The mean is 5.283333. Um, coefficient of variation is 54.22. Median mode are both 5. The IQR is 3.5. So make sure that you, these numbers match your numbers. Uh, student t test for a test at the center is 0 is 14.28581. If your numbers don't match mine, then double check your data. OK, we're going to do this with a PROC GLM. I know we're shocked that I would do that. And I don't need that PROC univariate anymore, so I'll just comment it out. ProcGLM is going to take a class statement, and the two classes are shift and worker. It's going to take a model statement. Uh, dependent variable is prodval. Um, shift is one of the independent variables. The other is worker. But, and here's the key, worker is nested within shift. So you can think of this as the worker is a function of the shift. And that's how SAS indicates nesting. So this is the worker is nested within the shift. And the way that I see this as, as a mathematician, it's the worker is a function of shift. So worker number one depends upon shift, whatever shift worker one is in. So that's why shift is in this parentheses. Then we make a random statement. And what is random? Well, the shift is random. But so too is the worker within the shift. Both are random. Now, if we recall from a previous SAS example, we're going to follow that up with a test. And now let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. OK, so we start with the GLM procedure. There's three levels in the shift, one, two, and three. There's 12 
levels in the worker, 110, 11, 12, 2, 13, 4, 3, etc. 60 observations. This first ANOVA table is the te test of the model itself. Um, and by the way, this may be a good time for you to have open on your desk your textbook. Open to page 546, table 10.1. And we'll try to replicate a lot of that information. At this level, I mean, when we were dealing with one-way, two-way, and three-way fixed effects models, it was very clear what an ANOVA table would be. I mean, it's the same one that's given to everybody. But once we got into more complicated designs, there's no stereotypical table to summarize those. And your book's table 10.11 actually does a good, uh, does a good job of summarizing a lot of the data in the nested design. It's not the only way, and you may not like this, but, and if you don't like it, then find another way of doing it. But a lot of the information that's important to the researcher is found in that table 10.11 and it's pulled from different parts of the SAS output. So for instance, corrected total of 59 degrees of freedom. If you look in the middle part, there's total, degrees of freedom is 59. Sum of squares is 484.18333333. Nothing else there. So this is the test of the model. Since the p-value is less than alpha, we know that this model does help explain some of the variation of the dependent variable, specifically including these two random effects that explain some of the variation of the prod val or the production value, which from a quality control standpoint is not good. Gives an R squared, a coefficient of variation, a root mean squared error, and again, root, root mean squared error is just the square root of the mean squared error, and then the mean of the dependent variable. Let's look at these two tables. They're identical once again, so I'll look at the, the third one. Uh, source, shift. So let's go in the middle row. We've got shift, sorry, the middle part of the table, 10, 11. Shift, two degrees of freedom. That matches. Sum of squares of 86.9333, that matches. F value of 1.57. Ooh, that's wrong. And here's why it's wrong at this table. In this table, SAS is calculating the F value as the ratio of the mean squared for the variable divided by the mean squared error. And now that works for the worker nested in shift because the denominator for that F statistic actually is the mean squared error. But it doesn't work for the mean squared sh uh, for the F value for the shift. The denominator for that F value should be the mean squared worker. So beware, this table in a nested design does not give you the numbers that you need. Interaction plot, and this is really good. Um, there is one more row that we could add here, and that would be the error, and that would just be var of error in the third row. So if you're testing for the worker in shift, it makes sense to divide the worker, the mean squared worker in shift by the mean squared error because the variance of error cancels out and all you're left with is that variance of worker shift. If we're dividing the mean squared shift by the mean squared error, that just cancels out this variance of error, leaving both the worker shift and the, and the shift, which means you've got a a complex hypothesis here that you're testing. It's not the one you think you are. So to get the right F value, you need to divide that mean squared shift by the mean squared worker in shift. Because that cancels out the two things we don't want, leaving only the variance of the shift, which we do want. So that's an explanation of why dividing by the mean squared error here is wrong. Because when dividing the, sh the mean squared shift by the mean squared error, the only thing that is taken out is that bar of error, leaving two different sources of variation. So let's move on to the last table. And this one actually does correctly do the division. Here's shift, degrees of freedom, sums of squares of 86.933. There's mean squared, which is in the bottom of the table. 
there's the f value. How did SAS get this f value? It divided the mean squared shift by the mean squared worker shift, which in this table they call the means they confusingly call the mean squared error. So it's the 43.46 divided by the 27.52. And there's the right p-value. The note at the bottom tells you what this, quote, error actually represents. And here, this error represents that mean squared worker shift. Here's the last table. This is the worker shift degrees of freedom, the type, the sums of squares, the mean squared from the bottom of the table, there's the f value, which actually is the mean squared worker divided by the mean squared error. And that's the correct one because, because the mean squared worker contains these two sources of variation, and dividing out by the, variation, uh, the mean squared error only leaves one variation due to the worker in the shift. So that actually, that's it. That's how you do nested designs, simple nested designs in SAS. So let's look at the script one more time. Well, let's do one more thing. If you notice in the bottom of the table, it's got those variance components. So let's go ahead and calculate, or have SAS calculate those variance components. And it's a new proc. It's going to be proc p, R O C bar comp. And of course, it takes the data. And the book talks about restricted maximum likelihood. That's a good method to use. It's not the default. But to keep up with the, the book, we'll, we'll go ahead and use REML. You have to specify, again, the class and the model. I'm just going to copy from above. Hit pause, take a look at this, get it typed in. Let's go ahead and run this. Let's go ahead and delete that stuff. Now let's run it. Okay, now let's run it. Back to the beginning. Here's the test of the model, of the entire model some interesting stuff. Remember these tables are wrong in a nested design. This talks about the expected mean square, so that kind of explains why those these upper models were wrong. Then it gives the correct uh, tables. Um, shift, uh, the f value for the shift is the mean squared shift divided by the mean squared worker in shift. And then the f value for the worker in shift is just the mean squared worker in shift divided by the mean squared error. And here are the variance components. This is the new part. The variance of shift is estimated to be 0 0.79750. The variance of worker in shift is estimated to be 4.88. And the variance due to error is, is estimated to be 3.11667. Those come. Oh, those are in the bottom of table 1011. Now, note that it doesn't give you the total, but to give the total of 8.794167, you just add these three together. And to get the percent of total, you would just divide each of these by that that total of 8.794167. So there we are. We just recreated most of table 10.11. We used the PROC GLM, and we introduced ourselves to the PROC VAR COMP. And PROC VAR COMP is very good at variance components, hence the name PROC VAR COMP. And we use method REML, uh, restricted maximum likelihood. It's one of the best. So hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourself. Talk to you later.